Hi, I'm Matt Joyner, and today I want to talk with you about demystifying your deal. In my professional experience, most people who get involved in buying or selling a business don't fully understand what they're getting into when they embark upon the process. Hopefully these videos will help demystify the process for you and help you work better with your lawyer and get you a better deal. In this five-part series, we're going to talk about the preliminaries to the deal, the purchase agreement itself, issues with regard to the seller, issues with regard to third parties, and then issues with regard to closing and post-closing of the deal. First, let's talk about the preliminaries to the deal. I want to talk about three things. The non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, the letter of intent, or LOI, and the due diligence process that takes place. Typically, after the parties have begun negotiations on the buying or selling of a business, the first document to be generated is an NDA, and that stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement. Before the seller will give out sensitive commercial information, like the names of customers, the amount of sales, and other issues that the buyer wants to know, the seller will require the buyer to sign a secrecy agreement guaranteeing that that information will not be used improperly or distributed among the public. With regard to the NDA, there are factors such as how long does the NDA last, what is the obligation of the party receiving the information upon the expiration of the NDA, do they destroy the documents, do they return them, who in the buyer's camp is allowed to see the information, their attorneys, their accountants, their bankers, maybe some employees. These are items that can be addressed in the initial non-disclosure agreement up front so that the seller can proceed with confidence in this deal knowing that if it does not work out they will not be harmed. Second, the letter of intent or LOI. A letter of intent is just that. It's a letter by the buyer to the seller stating the intentions of the buyer and what the buyer thinks in advance the deal will look like. Typically, there are two parts to the letter of intent. One that is non-binding legally, which is typically the outline of the deal conditions, the purchase price, the conditions to closing, financing contingencies, and other particulars of the deal that the buyer thinks they will wind up at, but they're not completely sure here at the beginning of the process. The second part of the letter of intent are the binding provisions. That's the real contract in the letter of intent. The binding provisions typically are an agreement by the seller not to shop the business around while the purchaser is looking at it, an agreement by the seller to give the buyer access to the office or information, and an agreement by the parties on how long this process will take and at what point it will terminate if it's not closed. A good letter of intent is an important step in a good deal. The more the parties can agree on in detail up front, the smoother things will go. There's always a danger, however, of getting too specific or getting too deep into the weeds, and it can gum up the process. With regard to letter of intent, one should be particularly careful if one is dealing with a business being sold by a business broker. Often the business broker will have a document they call a letter of intent, but if you read it closely, it's actually a binding contract to purchase the business. Don't let the broker's letter of intent bind you into a deal before you're ready. After the NDA and the LOI comes the due diligence process. This is the process by which the seller produces information to the buyer so the buyer can make their determination about their purchase of the business, the price, the conditions, or whether they want to go through with the deal at all. In the past, due diligence was performed by lawyers looking over hard copies of documents in conference rooms or what they call document rooms. Nowadays, it's handled mostly by loading those documents into an electronic document room where people can review them in a safe environment that's controlled by the seller. From the seller's perspective, the due diligence process is not just about producing information to the buyer, it's about establishing the seller's credibility with the buyer, which is absolutely crucial to the deal. In the due diligence process, 
the buyer wants to see that the seller actually knows what's going on in their own business. To the extent the seller can demonstrate their mastery of the details of their own business, the greater the confidence the buyer has in the process and in the deal, and most importantly, in the seller themselves. One thing the buyer is trying to determine in due diligence is whether there is something the seller is hiding about the business. Now every business has something the seller is not eager to put forward. These are items that need to be addressed candidly at the right time and it will greatly enhance the seller's credibility. The buyer is going to find these things out. If the seller comes forward with them, then that makes the buyer feel that and you're not hiding anything. So here in the first part of our five-part series, we've looked at the preliminaries of the deal, the NDA, the LOI, and the due diligence process. Next up, we'll look at the purchase agreement itself. I'm Matt Joyner. Thanks for watching. If you need legal advice for your business in North Carolina, call Matt, send him an email, or connect with him on LinkedIn.